Hi, welcome to the Archaeoastronomy Database YouTube channel. Today I will be showing you how to add long-term and high accuracy data to your Stellarium installation. In the configuration window, you'll see that there are ephemeris settings that can be selected, but they can't be selected unless they're first installed. So there's two high accuracy settings and two long time data settings. And when they're not installed, it uses this data instead when they're not installed or the check marks are not clicked to activate the use of the extra data. So to get this data into Stellarium, you need to go to the website of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory or the JPL website and I will display that on the screen here and also put a link in the video description so that you can just click directly and once you follow that link you will see that there's the public FTP file browser and it's an index of this data that can be downloaded. Now it says Linux, but this is for any user. So looking back at Stellarium, you can see that we need to install the DE440, DE441, DE430, and DE431 data packs. And you can see that there are directories that link to each of those. And then within each directory, there are a few files, but the main file that you want is listed here. This is a screenshot of the Stellarium user guide with the section for how to install these extra data packs. Once you've downloaded all four of these files, the next step is to create the directory folder where you're going to place these files. Now there are two places that you can do this. You can either do it in the Stellarium installation file or you can do it in the user data file for your particular user of Stellarium. In Windows you can see that on the local disk under program files and Stellarium you'll see the Stellarium installation files and alternately, you can see here that if you go into the local disk and under Users, Username, App Data, Roaming, and then Stellarium, you'll find the user installation files. Now, in order to get all of these directory files to show, you may have to enable viewing hidden files and folders in Windows. It's probably easier to install in the installation directory, but I like to put it into the user directory because that's the directory that I actually back up that has all of my landscapes and other user specific settings. And I'll show you in another video in the future how to back up all of your Stellarium settings by taking this these files out of the user directory and then putting them into a fresh install of Stellarium. But whichever way you decide to do it, you'll know you're in the right place to create a folder to place these data packs into if you see this folder that says stars, both in the program installation directory and the user data directory, you'll see a folder that says stars. That's just kind of a visual clue that you're in the right place. There are some other areas that you might accidentally get into that are not the right place. But if you're out in this folder that says stars and then also landscapes and some other things that you might see, depending on your install, they're in, you're in the right place. So in this area, you want to create a new folder and label it FM, E-P-H-E-M, short for ephemeris. That's the folder you want to put the data packs into. So once you've created the FM folder, then simply drop those four files into the folder. And back in Stellarium, you'll need to exit completely and come back into the program. 
and go back into the configuration window, you should be able to check all the boxes for the high accuracy and long time data packs. And then of course you want to save your settings as always. And then you'll be able to have this higher accuracy data. Just by way of demonstration, I will show you briefly one thing that you will notice when you have this data turned on. I'm going to turn on the ecliptic of date. And then I'm going to zoom in on the sun. And then using the date and time window, I'm going to go back in time. Oh, we'll lock on to the sun. And the sun should always be found on the ecliptic, no matter what time of year it happens to be. And of course, as we go back in time, we should still always find the sun on the ecliptic at any time. But now you notice that it gets off the ecliptic if you go back past 1500 BC, 15,000 BC, excuse me. So going back into the configuration window, you see that that is the range around negative 1300, so we're well beyond that, that we have gone. And what happens is that the calculations that Stellarium uses can only represent the position of the sun so far back before they start to break down a little bit. And so this is quite far back. And if we come forward again, you'll notice that the sun is not on the ecliptic anymore. And then as soon as we get back within that range, then the sun is on the ecliptic again. But if we were to turn off this data, you notice that even for this time period, the sun is already off the ecliptic. And even going forward, it's off the ecliptic quite substantially. Even at 10,000 years, even at 9,000 years ago. Well, 9,000 years BC. Now it starts to get back on around 5,000, which is probably fine for most people's use, but Again, if you have the high accuracy and long time data packs installed in that directory, especially if you want to look at something beyond that, something in the 7,000, 8,000, 9, and of course all the way on through 10, 11, and 12, and only after you cross that 13,000 threshold do you lose that accuracy because of course by definition the sun has to be on the ecliptic and beyond this data it's all kind of just based on calculations which is one of the reasons you have to kind of know what you're looking at and where you're looking in Stellarium um, and the purpose that you're using it for in order to make sure that you're getting accurate data so that's it for this video if you have any questions or comments, please leave those below the video. And as always, it's much appreciated if you can share the video, click like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And if you're able, any support that you can give through Patreon or on PayPal would be extremely beneficial to the work of the Archaeoastronomy database. And I just wanted to thank my current patrons and all those who have participated in any way. And until next time, keep sky watching.